I'm back, and in the comfort of this studio, it's hard to imagine I was ever away. I don't need to imagine, though, because what I saw is still etched in my mind. What I never knew is what I know now, which is that those people who live in Gaza are mainly but unbelievably young. The average age is 17. That means that about a quarter of a million are under 10. And you know, if you know any 10-year-olds, 7-year-olds, 5-year-olds, 4-year-olds, the idea in the looseness of a war zone that you can control your children, that they won't be somewhere where they can be hit, is you know, beyond any kind of imagination. You can't, you can't hope to control that. So that in a very densely packed urban area, if you decide to throw missiles, shells and the rest, then undoubtedly you will kill children. And that is what they do. There was one specific moment that stood out above all others. And that was penetrating the third floor of the Shiva Hospital, one of two floors dedicated to children. That's where I met Maha, terribly crippled by shrapnel that had penetrated her spine. That's where I saw this little two and a half year old with panda sized, huge, suppurating, round panda like wounds that almost prevented her eyes opening at all. They were the consequence of a broken skull and a fractured nose. I can't get those images out of my mind. I don't think you can either because they've been everywhere. They are the essence of what is happening in Gaza. Now, of course, Hamas, for its part, was throwing rockets into Israel, designed, ideally, as they would put it, to kill Israelis. But, of course, Israel, courtesy of American finance, has invented the most brilliant shield, which is keeping absolutely everything out. And uh, that's a big difference. The suffering is amongst the ground troops, mainly 20-year-olds, who go in and get killed. So when I last spoke to the Norwegian doctor, who is one of those dealing with the consequences of this bombing, I asked him how many children have been wounded. They've registered 1,310. How many children dead? 166. But that number is growing all the time. That is what makes this something that every one of us has to confront. We have to know that in some way we actually share some responsibility for those deaths. Because for us, it is no priority whatever to stop it. Our United Nations, our government, our world is not that interested. The fact that you're watching this, that you've chosen to watch it, means that you're actually motivated to do something. And that, in the end, is the greatest hope the people in Gaza have. We cannot let it go on. If our reporting is worth anything, if your preparedness to listen and watch and read is anything to go by, together we can make a difference.